What's going on chess friends? National Master James Canty III here with chess.com and today we have game of the day with Tata Steel Chess 2021. With the white pieces we have Alexander Donchenko and with the black pieces we have Fabiano Caruana. Let's get right into it. We have d4 and d5 from Fabi and then we have c4 and c6 here so Slav defense. Very solid guys played at the world championship level here and also a lot of times you see what we call the reverse London system which is really nice so definitely pay attention to this guys if you're looking for something to play against the d4 pieces knight of three or d4 move knight of three knight of six e3 and bishop f5 very strong here we get our bishop outside the pawn chain if you think about a london system with the white pieces this is exactly what this is just in the reverse colors right so actually after bishop f5 knight to c3 then we have e6 here very strong and if queen to b3 was to happen at any given moment we can always meet queen b3 with queen b6 usually you want to attack things like the b7 pawn they call it attacking the weakness of the last move and not that bishop f5 was the last move but when this bishop did move it did allow b7 to be slightly hanging and, and loose to be honest so queen to b6 will be a way to defend if queen to b3 was to happen now after e6 here locking the bishop outside the pawn chain white makes a beautiful move knight h4 knight h4 is actually part of this whole system here where we're just going to chop off this bishop and if you think about the london system with the white pieces what does black actually do when the bishop's on f4 it's literally the reverse the knight goes to h5 in some cases hence that's why they play h3 to be able to back the bishop up to h2 now in this case actually a little bit different because we are a tempo down trying to play the london system here with the black pieces after knight h4 there's bishop to e4 a very strong move here it's provoking a weakness and after f3 it provokes a weakness the king squares are, are weak around the king here but it is a move it definitely is a move and this is part of the theory and after f3 there's bishop to g6 here and we're going to chop this bishop at our leisure says white here after bishop g6 bishop d2 here a lot of times you're going to castle queen side in these variations here and try to launch a king side attack especially even after snapping on g6 now bishop e7 and then knight takes g6 h takes g6 and queen to c2 here again just following the plan we castle queen side in this line usually you can't castle king side but with this open rook file here probably not going to do that and black is doing a great job of being patient and waiting before castling castling is sometimes an overrated move it is about king safety but castling in particular is usually sometimes an overrated move and sometimes we castle a little bit too quickly so watch how fabi does this after queen c2 knight b to d7 here we have minor pieces that are knights here but we do want to play e5 and c5 being our best moves or some of the thematic ideas that happen in this opening slav and the semi slavs you play e5 or c5 at some point in the game so after knight b to d7 there's castles and a beautiful move here actually to set up many threats and something that you see even in the chambanko slavs which is a6 here a6 is very nice here so after capturing we're going to play things like b5 c5 and whoever gets to the king first in opposite side castles is usually going to win but there is no opposite side castles as white is the only one castle so far and black on the other hand has not castled yet so let's see what happens a6 and then g4 here we're just all out going for it looks scary but looks are very deceiving in chess here black really isn't in that much trouble to be honest there's nothing you can attack and usually when you have an extra pawn this double pawn double pawns aren't always a bad thing having double pawns like this around the king actually gives it an extra uh sh shield of protection around the king here so these these pawns are very strong right now but uh, white needs to definitely have something going here or it's going to be equal and black's just going to end up winning the game let's see what happens d takes c4 bishop takes c4 and b5 that's why we played a6 here a6 now anchors the pawn a little bit more c6 as well and we want to be able to play c5 so we had to anchor our a6 pawn b5 bishop or b5 pawn with a6 bishop e2 and then c5 here a beautiful move we're going to open up the lines and diagonals here um for uh for our pieces where the rook uh, the rook can be right in front of the king and the queen here nice x-ray and after c5 we have d5 as a pawn sacrifice you have two ways to capture this pawn takes or knight takes now if pawn takes we do have g5 here which is a little bit annoying we have to do something with our knight now knight g8 looks gross don't try that at home and then knight h5 after knight h5 knight takes d5 and this is actually not what we wanted anymore we thought this was a great position but in reality it's really not anymore so he actually takes with the knight to eliminate that cramped type type position and also take this pawn at the same time of course white takes it and we take back here so now we have a very nice pawn structure here with a c4 b4 a5 i mean everything is going to be pushed here as quickly as possible and whoever gets to the king first is going to win so let's see who gets there first f4 and then b4 and then e4 from white here breaking up the center trying to make something happen then we do have e5 from fabi and after uh, d4 uh, sorry d4 from fabi and then e5 
from Donchenko. A lot of pawn play here, guys. A lot of pawn play, as you see. I mean, a very interesting pawn structure to have literally all these pawns right here. But after e5, there's knight to b6. We're trying to get closer to the position. And then after e6 here from Donchenko, trying to make something work. The idea here, of course, if pawn takes or moving it, we take on g6 with check. And the king looks very loose here. Very loose. Bishops are on the board. The rook can almost have a file here, something to do. This is kind of hanging. It's a very balanced or a double-edged position. Not really balanced. Very double-edged. But here, after e6 uh, we have played queen to d5 from fabi here attacking the a2 pawn and defending uh indirectly or directly here from the back way diagonally uh on f7 and now after queen d5 there's uh e takes f7 check i could capture this with the king or the queen or if you're fabi here i don't have to take it at all i just move out of the way and actually what's funny is my king is castled here quotation marks because my king is very safe to be honest you don't have a knight to put in any of the squares where you can even check me at so that's cool you can't check me with a bishop so how do you actually get to my king says fabiano after king f8 very nice using this pawn the enemy pawn here as shelter king f8 and then after king f8 there's h4 he's literally going for it all out because you kind of have to it's white here black has a beautiful position a2 is hanging and we're going to take that says fabiano we're going to just grab that pawn queen takes g6 he says i'm going to just grab this pawn and here we go with a b3 interesting move very strong by the way intending moves like c4 and knight a4 as well and even something like a a5 a4 a3 after b3 there's bishop to e1 here i guess just activating the rook in a way also giving the king maybe a run square bishop to e1 c4 is now on the board here we're pushing these pawns as past pawns must be pushed now these aren't passed yet but if we do get rid of this one this will be a great pass pawn to use for mating ideas and etc rook takes d4 very nice move and after rook takes there's knight a4 attacking b2 almost mating very close to mate here queen b1 defending mate and defending the queen or attacking the queen here in this position this there's a lot going on you know queen trade is almost it's basically imminent here it's going to happen inevitable what are you going to do in this position if you're fabiano how do you proceed here we go, guys. Bishop a3 is on the board. Bishop to a3. Can you believe it? Look at this nasty move. What happens if pawn takes a3? If pawn takes a3, well, let's see it. b2. King c2 is forced because we don't want to just drop the queen. Come on now. And then queen b3 check. King here is only move, actually. c3, which is a beautiful check. You can't go to any of these squares, so you have to go forward. And when you go forward, GG, start over. This is a new, you can just start a new game. It'll be easier for the both of us. This is a check here. Rook to d3 and queen to b6 and GG. Have a nice day. Game is over. King has to move somewhere and we're queening again. Two queens on the board. That's nasty. Get that off the screen. So let's go back here. Bishop to queen b1 and bishop a3. And after bishop a3, he has to take this queen here. He does take the queen. And now we're threatening the queen again. But look at this cool move here, guys. King c2. How many of you would queen immediately, right? Queen. Oh, he's, he's just lost his mind. We're just going to queen. Well, let's see what happens if he does queen. Bishop b4 check. What a surprise. Bishop takes and rook takes a1. And you have lost your queen here. There's still a lot of play left. Yeah, we're up a piece as black here, to be honest. But I think we're going to snap. This pawn is white and maybe even grabbing this one. And that piece may not be as much as you thought it was anymore. It looks more uh, equal to anything else than that. Rook b8 was Fabi's move, choice here, which is a really cool move here. If you take on a3, well, there's actually a mate here. Beautiful mate. Rook b2 check. That was the intention of playing rook to b8. A very nice move. We're playing rook to b8 so that we can, um, we can play rook b2 check. And once the king goes to the back rank here, inevitable, we checkmate right there. Beautiful way to checkmate. So rook to b8 from Fabi. And then after rook b8, there's rook d8 here. Looks like a cool move. Also looks like a crazy move because it is. But it also just diverts the rook. That's the whole idea is to de divert the rook diversion here from the square. So we take it. And then, of course, now we take on a3. But we have some tricks up our sleeve here. C3 first from Fabiano. Stopping this bishop from checking on b4, which means now we can queen. C3, bishop to g3. Out of the way. And then look at this nice sequence here. Bam. Rook to d2 check first. That's a piece, right? But then he says, wait a second, hold on, I'm going to get one too. Now, we could actually take this bishop and still be winning by a land side, actually. But there's a better move. When you find a good move, look for a better one. Knight to c5 check. There's two ways. You can take on c3 or you can play king c4. Both of them will be met with the next move here. And actually, king to c4 was the move by Donchenko. And the move that would have been met by no matter king takes c4 or king takes c uh, king c4 or king takes c3 would be knight to e4 attacking this bishop attacking this bishop both bishops are hanging i'm about to queen two separate ways here 
this game is completely over. And actually, there was a resignation right here from Donchenko, guys. But very strong game here. If you guys are interested in playing the Slav, Chambanko Slavs, and Slavs in this type of manner, reverse London systems, definitely check out this game from Fabiano here and other games, of course, from Fabi and some of the greats and the elites that actually practice the Slav system, guys. So I'm National Master James Canty III here. And with the game of the day, this is chess.com. And we'll see you guys on the next video.